Excellent. So, uh, back to the history, this uh, uh, gentleman, uh, Ferdosi, this uh, work is about a hundred thousand verses. Wow. This poem is written in terms it has a thousand chapters only in the book wow and this uh, just to give you the an idea of the size of the scale is seven times larger than the iliad wow so it really is a big it's like an encyclopedia it took 30 oh. years to write it's an incredible piece of work and it's so rich and full of stories and so we decided to, to go to that source material and uh, try and bring this to a Western audience which is completely unexposed to this very rich history of mythology and tradition. I think that's brilliant. The Ferdowsi was uh, betrayed by the uh, Sultan though, wasn't he? Yes, he was. He, he was initially, as you had said, right. promised a very large amount of gold for this work. Exactly. And um, essentially what happens is, is when he finally delivered his work, right. uh, the king at the time, which I believe uh, was the son of the king who originally had uh, right. commissioned him, um, kind of decided not to pay him uh, because what was because Ferdowsi wrote uh, that his books were about all of the all of uh, Persia and all of the kings and and the people instead of just him. Right? Well, the Sultan just wanted, wanted Ferdowsi to, to talk about him. Yeah, he, he delivered a lot more than the Sultan expected. Right, right, and, right. Uh, so, yes. And so... So he gave him uh, three camels and silver instead. Yeah, he was paid in silver instead of gold, which uh, Ferdowsi was very bitter about. And he and, died poor. <laughs> and um, not only that, uh, what he did do is uh, he actually wrote some verses into the book so he had another version right. and later he added verses into the book which were not very complimentary to the king that uh, stiffed him oh. so uh, but that's sort of the history of the author but it is uh, it is amusing um, but, but, they, but, but they built under Reza Pahlavi they built a really nice mausoleum for him didn't they yes they have it's in uh, Tus uh -huh, uh, uh -huh. in Iran which is a, a city not far away from Mashhad which is sort of uh, north uh, eastern uh, right. region of Iran and uh, there is a mausoleum dedicated right, to him. Right, right. In, in uh, Persian culture and I and I refer to Persian culture rather than Iran specifically because right. Greater Persia extends beyond the borders of current uh, exactly, Iran. Yeah. I mean the Persian culture is very influential in Afghanistan. And Iran had uh, uh, Iraq as part of its territory long, at, long at, time at ago. At various times, absolutely. Large parts of uh, Iraq were part of Greater Persia as w were the Caucasus regions. Wow. Um, so oh, Azerbaijan. sorry. Can we look at the third? Uh, I, I don't want to, I want people to see all sure. the clips that he brought. So areas such as Azerbaijan, Georgia, really? um, uh, most of the, uh, you know, Samarkand, Bukhara, if you get into the Central Asian uh, wow. countries. Okay, it's the stores of penance and exile. This, this is a, a video montage of some of the imagery that we use in our third book. And this book is where it gets more into the fantasy wow. uh, portion where they are battling demons and battling dragons because it is a combination of historical fact as well as mythology. And mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the book spans a very large period of time. It's, it spans ancient Persia right up until the time of when Alexander the Great invades Persia. Right. And then there's a section uh, from when Alexander the Great uh, had invaded Persia all the way right up um, until actually the book ends Right. Because in Ferdowsi's mind, when uh, Persia was conquered and the Arabs uh, conquered, uh, right. that was sort of his greatest tragedy for him. And that's where the book actually ends. Awesome. Now let's talk about one king. And, 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 and this is uh, uh, the one of the stuff that I've read is uh, about King Xerxes. King Xerxes married a Jewish yes. commoner, Esther. Esther. Yes. And that's a real story, right? Yes, it is. That actually is a historical fact story. It's not mythology. And um, actually, the um, from the, there is a there is a cylinder uh -huh. that is in the United Nations, 
And uh, that cylinder, or a co excuse me, a copy of that cylinder is right. in the United Nations, which is acknowledged as the very first universal declaration of human rights. Wow. And so when Cyrus the Great invaded Babylon, right. and he basically, he freed the Jews, and he huh. allowed them to rebuild their temples. Right. And uh, so, and it's also uh, recorded in the Bible as well. And um, so he was the very first person in st prior to that, historically, conquerors would come in and basically wipe people out and take right. over and become the new kings. And what he did was, when he conquered, he took everyone he conquered and put them back in charge and said, the only difference is, is that I am the king of kings. You will still remain as a king, but you are a king subject to me as your emperor. And that was the big difference. And he also gave rights to all people, right. and he gave them all religious freedom rights to practice right. their own religions, even though the Persians themselves had their own religion. Right, the right. Persian religion was Zoroastrianism, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. um, even though they practiced their own religion, they were very tolerant and allowed mm -hmm. all other people to practice their own religions. So yes. it was free to, for him to marry whoever he wanted, even if it wasn't from his religious background. Wow, that's awesome. Now, of course, we're, you, this is uh, what you're doing now is not political. I mean, sure. be, be, when you came in, I asked, well, let me see, there was a Shah of Iran, and that's when things fell apart, and then we had the crazy Ayatollah, and now Iran is, we don't know where it is. Sure. So this is non-political, and you, you're just appreciating the culture and bringing the culture of, you know, what was lost in the current administration, I guess. Exactly. I mean, we, we are very interested in uh, preserving uh, the richness of the culture. Right. Uh, we believe that the Shahnameh is uh, basically a cultural gem of the world. Not oh, necessarily exactly. just of it. Persia, yes. but for the world. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of uh, uh, morals to be taken from the stories. Um, the heroes within the stories are very right. different from Western heroes. Uh, for example, uh, Western heroes, you know, do no wrong, whereas um, our heroes, they are flawed characters, they make mistakes, but at the end of the day, it's what's in their heart that's most important. Oh, I see. That's great. Okay, so now let's, uh, we only have a minute to go, yes. so we're going to have to do a wrap. Um, thank you so much for, oh, we have 30 seconds, actually. So. Thank you so much for coming and and for participating in our show. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching the show. And uh, if you have anything, uh, please contact Richie Bondock. And uh, he's been recruiting good guests for us. And again, this is Myrna Lim. Thank you so much and good night. Thank you.